Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about low VOC paint, and we'd like to thank Brandon Gerber for liking and sharing the podcast. And we'd like to thank Podcast Guru for featuring us on their podcast app. You can download their podcast app in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, It's called Podcast Guru. It's P-O-D-C-A-S-T, capital G-U-R-U. And Sunday, December 5th, 2021, is the last day you can download a free copy of our 15th ebook on Amazon. It's called Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Book 15. And after the 5th, you can download a copy for only a dollar. Exciting. In October of 1948, a thick cloud of smog formed over the town of Denora, Pennsylvania for five days. Toxic smoke from a zinc plant in the town got caught in a cold layer of air and it held the smog over the town, killing 20 people. Wow. Another 50 died within a month and thousands of the residents got sick from breathing in the smog. Wow, that's terrible. And what would they do? There's no internet in 1948. Yeah. Or TV, really, right? <laughs> right. right. And, and you can't imagine it'd be that dangerous. Right, just yeah. Just smog. In 1952, over 3,000 people died in London when cold air trapped smog over the city for five days. Mm. The smog was so thick, people were abandoning their cars in the streets because they couldn't see the road and public transportation was stopped above ground. Historians say over 100,000 people got sick from the smog, and both of these events led to governments creating regulations to reduce air pollution. The British Lung Foundation says poor indoor air quality has been linked to lung diseases like asthma, COPD, and lung cancer. The EPA says VOCs are one of the sources of indoor air pollution, and there's a growing body of scientific evidence that says the air in our home can be more seriously polluted than outdoor air, even in the most industrialized cities. Why don't you explain what VOCs are? VOC is short for volatile organic compounds, Mm -hmm. and these are carbon-based chemicals that vaporize into the air at room temperature. I spoke to Ecos Paints, it's E-C-O-S, capital P-A-I-N-T-S. They said as conventional paint dries and the liquid ingredients begin to evaporate, they can release fumes containing harmful VOCs into the air, and that's called Mm off-gassing. What are the hazards of VOCs? The EPA says volatile organic compounds, which are widely used as ingredients in products like paint, are emitted as gases, which can have short and long-term adverse health effects. You can get eye, nose, and throat irritation, headaches, loss of coordination, and nausea short-term. Long-term exposure can damage the liver, kidney, and your central nervous system, and some organic chemicals are suspected or known to cause cancer. Hmm. Well, you get sick when you're around paint, right? Yeah, yeah. I used to work for a spray paint company for a couple of years, and we always wore a respirator. But you know, over time, it's you're still breathing right. in a lot of this. And now I'm I'm pretty sensitive to paint. Oh, when, that's when, sweet. <laughs> when, whenever I'm painting, so now when I paint, I wear a paint respirator with it's charcoal smart. filters yeah. and replace them. Smart. When you smell conventional paint, you're inhaling VOCs and chemicals that could include hazardous air pollutants called HAPs. Hmm. And when they're inhaled into the lungs, they get into the bloodstream and can cause short-term health effects like shortness of breath, dizziness, and nausea. All right. Echos Paints says children, pregnant women, and people with pre-existing medical conditions are especially vulnerable and should avoid VOCs. Mm -hmm. Babies can inhale 10 times the VOCs based on body weight compared to an adult. Oh, wow. The EPA says poor indoor air quality is one of the top five leading health risks, 
and some of the primary contaminants of indoor air quality are paints, varnishes, and solvents that contain high levels of VOCs. Lovely. What is the amount of VOCs in regular paint? The federal VOC limit for paint is 250 grams of VOCs per liter of flat paint and no more than 380 grams of VOCs per liter of non-flat paint. Okay. Although, although states can vary, California, for example, only allows 100 grams per liter for flat paint and up to 150 grams per liter for non-flat paint. Okay, and paint is sold in gallons, so... <laughs> so four liters is a little more than a gallon? All right. What about a low VOC paint? So the general VOC level for low VOC paint is 50 grams per liter, which is based on the limits set by the California South Coast Air Quality Management District. Hmm. But low VOC paint can vary between companies or states on the amount of VOCs allowed to be called low VOC paint. So it can vary, I guess, is the answer. So you need to do your homework. Which is not confusing at all. <laughs> right. What is no VOC paint? A paint can be called no VOC if it has less than 5 grams per liter of paint. I spoke to Easy Breathe. It's capital E, capital Z, capital B-R-E-A-T-H-E. They have whole house ventilation systems. Mm -hmm. And they said many companies list the VOCs before a tint is added to the base paint. And tints can have high levels of VOCs. So the paint you picked is no longer low or a no VOC paint if it's colored with a high VOC tint. Oh, geez. So, so that's another thing to check when you're comparing paint if they have to add tint to the paint. So you'd want to pick a low or no VOC tint if the paint needs to be colored. And I read one article where they said pick light or medium tints in general. Darker colors have higher levels of VOCs. Well, if you're in a store and you're going to ask the employee about the tints right. VOC, right. They're, they're probably just going to blink at you. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're probably not going to know the VOC levels of the tints they have. So you should do your research. Right. right. I spoke to AFM Safe Coat. You're a busy this week, huh? Yeah, yeah, talk to a lot of people. AFM is just the letters A, F, and M. Safe Coat is capital S-A-F-E-C-O-A-T. They said no or zero VOC paint doesn't necessarily mean zero VOC emissions because the EPA is primarily concerned with VOCs in paint that react with sunlight to form outdoor smog. Hmm. Many VOCs that don't cause smog are exempt or not counted against the VOC level in paint. So a low or no VOC paint may contain ingredients that are potentially harmful and classified as HAPs, harmful air pollutants. What? Zero VOC paint doesn't always mean it's safer. <laughs> so again, you need to do some homework on your paint. Right. Safe Coat says some of the HAPs you could find in low VOC paint, which are potentially sources of irritants or carcinogens, are chemicals like glycols, ethanol, ammonia, acetone, biocides, formaldehyde, crystalline silica, and chemical additives to mask odors. Hmm. They recommend reading the label for the ingredients, review the MSDS, and do some research to find a company that goes the extra mile to eliminate dangerous VOCs and toxic ingredients. Right. What is MSDS? MSDS is Material Safety Data Sheets. It lists the hazardous ingredients of a product. Right. When you're comparing paints, you can look for certifications like Green Seal. It's G-R-E-E-N, capital S-E-A-L. They're a nonprofit organization. They have a GS-11 paint standard. Certified paint can't contain more than 50 grams per liter of VOCs for flat paint and no more than 100 grams per liter of VOCs for non-flat paint. Certified paint prohibits HAPs, carcinogens, heavy metals, and other harmful chemicals. Hmm. GreenGuard Gold certified paint is tested for more than 360 VOCs and hazardous chemicals 
and it has low chemical emissions. Hmm. Besides looking for low and no VOC paint to reduce the VOCs released into your home, there's paint technology to improve the air quality. Photocatalytic paint uses minerals that absorb light to provide energy to break down harmful pollutants that come in contact with the surface of the paint, improving your air quality. Space age, man. There are paints that use polymers, zeolite, or diatomaceous earth to trap or break down VOCs. You sound kind of excited about that. Yeah, how cool is that? Mm -hmm. I spoke to Sherwin Williams. It's S-H-E-R-W-I-N capital W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. They have a paint called Super Paint that uses air purifying technology and formaldehyde reducing technology. It's a zero VOC formula that helps improve indoor air quality Hmm. by reducing VOCs released from sources like cabinets and carpets. It also reduces odors from cooking, smoking, and pets. And their Harmony line of paint also reduces VOCs in the air, and it's Green Guard Gold certified. Cool. I spoke to Graffenstone about their paint, and Graffenstone is G-R-A-P-H-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Their paint has a pure lime base that's combined with graphene. Graphene is one of the thinnest, strongest, and most conductive materials ever developed. In paint, it slows heat conduction through walls and ceilings, helping with energy efficiency, and with a lime-based paint like Graffenstone, it increases the durability. Lime-based paint absorbs CO2 from the air, smells, and it's antimicrobial, and they have multiple green certifications and awards for their paint. What does antimicrobial mean? For paint, it slows or stops the growth of bacteria, viruses, and mold that can cause odor. Hmm. When I spoke to Echos Paints, they said their paint was originally developed for people with chemical sensitivities who couldn't tolerate the chemicals and odors in traditional paint. Their paint is water-based, and it uses special pigments to avoid harmful VOCs and glycols that are found in conventional tints. Mm -hmm. Their paint is non-toxic and zero VOC, and they publish ingredient lists and test results for all of their products. Cool. AFM Safe Coat has environmentally friendly paint that contains no formaldehyde, ammonia, crystalline silica, or ethylene glycol. Their paint was originally developed for physicians for chemically sensitive patients, and most of their paints will also seal painted surfaces and stop the off-gassing of previous paint. Interesting. I spoke to the Real Milk Paint Company about their non-toxic zero VOC paint. And Real Milk is just R-E-A-L, capital M-I-L-K. And their paint is made out of natural ingredients like milk protein, lime, and naturally occurring minerals for the color. Hmm. They use pharmaceutical lime as one of the primary ingredients. And as it cures, it draws in carbon dioxide from the air to harden and it also absorbs odors. Lime is a fire retardant, so it will slow down the spread of a fire. Milk paint comes as a powder in a paint can. So you get this can, but there's a bag of powder inside, Mm -hmm. and then you just mix with water the amount you need for your project. Interesting. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So that way they don't have to add preservatives because they have this powder. I read an article on the Tree Hugger website about the best zero VOC paints. And they recommended Echos Paints, Bear, B-E-H-R, Benjamin Moore, B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N, capital M-O-O-R-E, Earth Safe Finishes, Sherwin-Williams, Green Planet Paints, AFM Safe Coat, YOLO Color House, it's Y-O-L-O Color House, and Milk Paint. And they said even though a paint is low or no VOC, always have adequate ventilation while you're painting and consider wearing a paint respirator. Right. The EPA says paint walls and ceilings in spring, summer, and fall when windows can be left open for two or three days after painting. Wow. Use window-mounted box fans to exhaust vapors from the room you're painting. 
take breaks while you're painting to reduce the amount of vapors you're inhaling, or consider wearing a paint respirator with replaceable filters. Keep children out of rooms with freshly painted walls and ceilings, and follow the label recommendations to reduce hazards and alert you to first aid measures if there is a problem. If you're painting in one room, you can isolate it by using plastic over the doorway. You can cut a slit in the plastic and have a box fan blowing out, and that way it's going to draw in fresh air from the house and vent out all the paint vapor. And if you have the air or the heat on, you should cover the vents. Hmm. There's a company called Zipwall. It's Z-I-P, capital W-A-L-L. They have plastic doorways with a zipper, and it uses double back tape over the molding so you can quickly create a barrier to that area that you're working in. And nice. then, then it's easy to get in and out of the room with the zipper. Mm -hmm. How long does paint give off VOCs? It's going to release the most VOCs for two or three days after you paint. And one study I read said latex paint can give off VOCs for three to five years. Wow. That's why the EPA recommends increasing ventilation in your home year-round to improve indoor air quality. And companies like Easy Breathe have whole house ventilation systems that you can install yourself. Cool. Do you have anything else to add? To reduce the pollutants in your home, look for low or no VOC paints and do some research on the paint and the ingredients. Have plenty of ventilation while you're painting and for a few days after you've finished. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 15 on Amazon. And if you downloaded our latest book, book 15, we'd really appreciate a review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, fixithomeimprovement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.